everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 186. Larry here, and I'm finally home. Uh, yeah, welcome home. Anthony here, who has always been home. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, my, my uh, arduous uh, trips uh, are now over. Uh, okay. I was, I'm out of the Matrix and um, until my uh, new green screen shows up next week. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, that's when I retire. <laughs> can't wait for this thing to show up so uh we're gonna do a little bit of a shorter episode this week just kind of give everyone a heads up though you yeah. probably will notice that when you see the time stamp uh on the episode but uh me and Aunt got you know it's just some things going on but we still wanted to bring something to all of you yes absolutely and for a weekend that you know we're all supposed to be staying home obviously because of the current climate and whatnot uh, I, we were both kind of surprisingly busy, so uh, we're kind of getting this episode <laughs> yeah. in under the wire. We we kind of are, yes, admittedly, because uh, as soon as this is done, throwing a beginning on it, throwing an end on it, and throwing it up <laughs> for tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say that we're throwing it up. That well, just, no. That just sounds great. We're vomiting this episode onto the There internet. you go. That's there what we're go. trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, well, first, let's talk about um, you finally picked up some some of these game cases you know we talked about how i have some there are they so they're behind me directly yeah uh, some game cases from customgamecases.com um i went genesis because those are the games so far but you mm-hmm. went and i'm dying to see what these look like yeah um for the n64 yeah i went nintendo 64 because um with the way i have my shelves organized with all of my games most majority of my genesis game, uh, games already have cases mm-hmm. and all of my other games like um Super Nintendo and my and NES games and stuff like that. You know how the labels are on the side or the top or whatever, so that when you stack your games, you can still read the labels. Yes. The biggest problem with Nintendo 64 games has always been that you can't read the label because it's only on the front of the cartridge and you can't organize them on a shelf properly like that. So I thought, let me start getting cases for the N64 so I can actually see, you know, what I have. You know what's um, funny? Uh, back then, I don't think I've, I don't think that ever bothered me originally that there was no end labels. I don't but, know why. It just, well, I mean, it, it didn't necessarily bother me either because I would just kind of flip through them. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, but now that I'm kind of a collector, you know, now that I collect, oh no, now it's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now that I collect games, and you know me, I'm a stickler. I love getting the original packaging. <laughs> um, you know, it just bothers me that these I have a bunch of games sitting on a shelf, and I have no idea what they are because I can't look at the labels right away. I have to pull them all out and like kind of sit through them. Even though I have, a, I have them alphabetically that way, it's still mm-hmm. a pain. So, so I went in 64, um, reached out to custom game cases. I think I ordered them maybe a month ago. Um, so it took them, about, like, took them about three to four weeks. Mm-hmm. But that's also because they give you an option. You can order the clear game cases or the gray ones. Now I wanted the gray ones because it just seemed to make sense for the yeah, I agree. Nintendo, you know. Um, yeah. and, and so they showed up last week, and I have to say, super impressed with what it looks okay, like. Okay, let's so, take a look. So I'm only going to show two, um, but first up, it, I'm going to show, obviously, the iconic Ooh. Super Mario 64. Let, now, let me ask you this. I, we're looking at it right now on YouTube, yes. um, and you can check it out on YouTube at Retro Gamers Podcast. Let me, I want to know, first of all, your reaction when you saw that laser printing, laser cut, mm-hmm. well, not cut, but laser printed cover. Because when I first saw it on, on the Genesis carts, yeah. it blew my mind. No, no, no. It's absolutely amazing. And by the way, I'll post images of these also mm-hmm. on our page, so keep an eye out for them. Um, I was amazed by it because it, and with the shape and everything like that, it reminds me of the old N64 box. It's not that different in terms of shape. And they actually give you oh, the yeah. option. Yeah, they actually give you the option to um, print the labels um, horizontally or vertically if you mm-hmm. want. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, I went horizontal because that's the way oh, that's the boxes call. used to look. So it made sense. Very good call. Yeah. So uh, the printing is really good. The color is sharp. Everything looks good. It looks just like the box. Now, granted, you know, because it's a case, it's a plastic case. So the um, the art is, you know, it's a printout and slipped into the case. So it's almost like a case when you know way back when when you used to rent a game from a video store you know how they have those plastic cases that's that's <laughs> yes, kind of what it's like that. yeah yeah it's kind of what it's like you, you grab the case off of the shelf but anyway yeah. so looks really good um and they they have the spine art and they have the back and on the back it has it's it's a printout of the original box so they have the um you know they have all of the images of the game that were on the original box art they have the the, the summary of the game 
mm -hmm. uh, all the bullet points, the Nintendo label, the, the barcode, everything. Like, they covered That's, it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they just printed it right up. But yeah. beautiful. Now, when you open it up, which I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> again, on the left side, there is a space for the instruction booklets, which, by the way, somewhere hiding in my closet in a bin somewhere i still have some instructions really? for my n64 games i i've just been like kind of carrying them around with me um <laughs> i just have to track them down because now i can put them in the cases yes and then obviously there's a slot for the actual cartridge mm -hmm. and up top a slot for the uh, memory card and and I, I figured there'd be a slot for the memory card, but you are showing right now one of the uh, third-party memory cards that's a little bigger yeah. than the Nintendo uh, mm -hmm. memory cards, which were about half the size. So kudos to Custom Game Cases for making it where it would fit those larger yeah. memory cards. Yeah, because if you can see, uh, I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously they have like the little the little pieces that keep the cartridge in place. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice they have them in specific places, so they'll fit the smaller cards. Yeah, which is really cool. very cool. And then the uh, but and then the last thing that I thought was really interesting, and I actually thought when I popped the game in that something was wrong with it at first. Oh. You'll notice that it's kind of loose in. Oh, the it is pack. a little it weeble wobbles. Yeah, and even the game also because they have um, when you when you look at it off of the back, um, they have it set up so it does pop out from the back, so it's oh, easy. So it's easier to. Run. It's easier to remove the cartridge. That? Yeah, it's easier to remove the cartridge from the case because of that. Check so my actually, Genesis ones. It's actually clever. It's very clever. Very clever. No, Genesis ones are just traditional. The the two clips. Yeah, no, this one. On this side. one just you can pop them right out because of the fact that they're, they're oh. they come off a little bit. I like that so, a lot. Yeah, so that's really cool. So very happy with that. The other one that I wanted to show, of course, was going to be one of my favorite games of all time, which is Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Beauty again, looks very, very beautiful. And the only reason why I'm pointing out Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time is because I learned something new um, uh -oh. this weekend when you were I got the case. Today, years old. I was no, no, no. I was well. I was today years old when I realized my Ocarina of Time game is missing. Oh, like comp like no, my cartridge. I don't know where my you cartridge can't find is. your cartridge. Oh, I that's not I good. I cannot find my cartridge for Ocarina of Time. Uh oh. And, uh, yes, I'm. I am very worried. Wow, it has gone uh, missing. Are you? Sh it's got to be in a bin somewhere. No, I mean, well, I mean, I'm gonna check. I haven't checked all my bins and stuff, but I also realized this I haven't checked all my bins. This, this also this also isn't the only game I'm missing because one of the other um, uh, game cases I bought was um, WCW NWO World Tour, and that one's not around. So a couple of my games are missing. I gotta go. I gotta go do some digging. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should have did your inventory before you started ordering these cases. Well, no, I mean because I, I mean I know I own Ocarina of Time. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, apparently I've, not. I've never. No, I do. It's just. It's just missing. I'll go on an archaeological dig in my closet one day and see if I can find them, along with the, uh, along with the uh, instruction booklets. But anyway, the bottom line is I bought, I think, 13 or 14 cases. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, went, yeah, I didn't realize you bought that. No, that's cool. Yeah. Trust me. Because I wanted to test it out since uh, – well, not so much test it out, but I knew that they were at least going to be good because they were going to be printed. Now mm -hmm. that I have, like, half of my collection in cases, I will be, filling, I will be getting the rest done. Because awesome. I have, you know, I still have like another 20 and 64 games that are just sitting loose. <laughs> I would love all of these right here. I mean, these are uh, Super Nintendo games. Yep. They do have some, I think, for Famicom and Super Famicom. Well, maybe not Famicom, but I think some for Super Famicom. But I would love to start getting these. And my NES games are over here on my other shoulder mm -hmm. uh, behind me. I would love to get all of them in cases. I know... Obviously, I won't be able to fit the same number back right. on the shelves. But let me ask you a question. Just curious. Um, the N64 game case, is it roughly the same size as an N64 box? Uh, I believe it is, actually, because this is this is essentially what an N64 is. It looks it. Yeah, it's about the same size. It does look I should have grabbed size. one of my boxes ah, to compare the I size. I just thought of it now. So yeah, but I think, I think it's pretty much the same size. But okay. I will say this. I did have to rearrange my um my shelves in order to accommodate these bad boys because they're big but worth it absolutely oh no totally it. totally yeah. worth it absolutely so, totally worth it i have so no check, complaints here at all check out customgamecases.com mm -hmm. and um tell them the retro gamers sent you they, know, they don't know who we are and it's not gonna save you any money but it gets our name out there so yeah 
<laughs> they'll just be like, who are the retro gamers? And then they'll just like file us. And this <laughs> We're going to charge you double now. Exactly. Um, another quick thing I want to get into uh, before uh, we kind of have a bigger story to, to discuss. Um, so actually... Let's do this. I, I'm working on the, we're working on the fly here. Forgive me. Let's talk about some news that might be coming out soon. And I know you were telling me about some maybe rumors or some news. Cause then we can wrap up with the other thing. Um, that we're Sounds good. About. So, uh, well, the first, the first bit of news was actually that um, Sony, Sony had announced last week that there was going to be uh, a big announcement regarding the PS five on Thursday, June 4th. Mm-hmm. So we were all gearing up for that, but uh, they announced today, uh, well, this drops tomorrow, but they announced uh, on Monday mm-hmm. that uh, they were going to postpone it because of other things obviously going on in the world. Um, so we're going to, I'm curious to see what they have to say about the PS5. Uh, there were some rumblings about what was going to be exactly backwards compatible on it, or if they were going to okay. announce, or if they were going to make the pre-order announcement um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, uh, so we're going to wait and see what Sony has to say uh, or when the announcement is going to be made now since it's been postponed. So that was the first Okay. Thing. All righty. The second thing, and this is the one that's really got me excited because um, we haven't really heard much from Sega outside of, you know, them, you know, obviously they had the Sonic movie earlier this year. They licensed their, they licensed their games out to other platforms, mm-hmm. but Last week, there was a um, reporter for a Japanese magazine um, who basically came out and said that he's not allowed to say what the details are, but he got permission. He got permission from Sega to say that he interviewed them for an exclusive announcement that will be dropping in their um, their magazine on Thursday, June fourth. So, okay. Yeah. And we don't know what it is. All he said, he said something to the effect of, it's big news that's going to affect the video game industry. So as soon as, as soon as this came out, there were a ton of rumblings going on about what it could possibly be. Yeah, it's about as vague as vague can be. Yeah, exactly. But, but there, were two thing, there, were two, there were two things people seem to be zeroing in on. Obviously, don't know which one, uh, which one is true, if either of them are true. But yeah. the, the first one was that um, Sega might be announcing a partnership with Microsoft um, mm-hmm. because Microsoft, for those of you who do not know, the Xbox isn't very popular in Japan. It actually doesn't do well. Um, the, the systems that do well in Japan are Nintendo and Sony. For some mm-hmm. other, and Microsoft is an import, obviously, for them because yeah. it comes from an American company. So the Xbox actually does not perform very well in Japan. So the first thing, the first rumor that was going around was that Microsoft is partnering with Sega of Japan in order to get, you know, to get their sales up. Oh, I got gotcha. you. In other I words, gotcha. like yeah. if say, in other words, yeah. So if, if it's like, a, if it's the Sega Xbox or Sega Microsoft partnership with the Xbox, they're hoping that Sega, you know, Sega of Japan will be able to increase the sales numbers. Now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for those of you who do not know, in Japan, Sega is still a really big deal. So when you go around, um, when I used to travel for work there to Osaka and Tokyo and stuff, um, there are Sega arcades all over the place. And when I say arcades, I'm talking like multi-level buildings mm-hmm. with just all, it, that's all Sega owns, Sega arcades. Um, you know, and think about, you know, any Sega games or anything like that, you can play them there, which is really cool. Um, so Sega's a big deal in Japan. They're, very, uh, they're, they're still very, very popular. So Microsoft teaming up with them for the Xbox, for the next Xbox launch, would be a big deal for them because they would be competitive in a, a huge video game market that they haven't been in. Like a like a 8K Sonic the Hedgehog 5 video game exclusive on the Xbox Series X. Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah something like that. And then basically they're going to give you a treadmill because you'll be Sonic. Ba- that's, VR, um, that's where we're yeah, heading. Right? Um, yep. The second rumor that came out, and this is the one that is really appealing to me but mm-hmm. as appealing as it is to me, it's uh, I'm also equally as uh, pessimistic. Trepidation. About it. Maybe, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe a little pessimistic or trepidatious, whatever. Trepidation is the word of the day. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> the second. The second uh, Phone numbers on the back of my license plate. I'll never forget that line for as long as I live. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wrestling aside. So the second, the second rumor from Sega is that 
they are going to announce the Sega Dreamcast 2 console. Ooh. See? Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, hmm. Right? What's your immediate reaction to that? Too late. Like, it's too... It's like, you know, it's like Men in Black 3 or uh, Indiana Jones 4. Like, is there too far of a gap between between consoles and don't get me wrong i'm not dismissing it i'm just immediately thinking of some you know well i mean here's my here's my uh, here's my gut response to that um atari vcs in television amico Mm -hmm. so other companies are starting to come back with video game consoles because you know, video, the video game market is booming. It just is. Uh, yeah. With the current situation in the world, it's booming even more. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we, they couldn't predict that it was going to be doing that. But, you know, the bottom line <laughs> is, I go, you know, it's, it, it's, it's growing at an exponential rate. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, my reaction to it wasn't necessarily that it's too late. My reaction to it was, well, if they're going against, if they're going to be aiming for current market consoles, like we want to compete with, PlayStation 5, Xbox, uh, Xbox Scarlet, whatever, whatever the hell they're going to call that thing. Xbox Series X. Xbox Series X. Oh, they need to get their name straight. Uh, <laughs> I, hate, I hate all of their names. Xbox they, what, Series X, PS5, they, and the Nintendo Switch, if they're going to compete with them, yes, that's where the pessimism comes in. Because I'm like, I don't know if they're going to be able to take a chunk out of that market for mm-hmm. themselves. That's, that's my assessment. However... My love for the Dreamcast is just, unfa- you know what I mean? Like, the Dreamcast, oh, it's, it's amazing. The yeah. Dreamcast was one of the best, I'm sorry, one of the best systems that mm-hmm. came out at the time. It Agreed. Out. Um, it just, yeah, it just didn't have the support it needed to be ultimately successful. So um, I would love to see them take another stab at it, but I would love to see them do it in the way Atari VCS or in the Intellivision yeah. Amico are going, where it's like, you are going to get some new games and they, the graphics are going to be awesome but you're also going to get a lot of retro out of it. So, so almost like it's a glorified mini that plugs in that, that can hook up to the internet and that, cause most likely, I mean, odds are it's going to be digital download only. Cause that's where everything's starting to head mm-hmm. to digital downloads. Right. Um, like, I don't know. I just hear dreamcast two. And as much as the dreamcast rocked, like you said, and I agree with you on everything you said, for 1999, when that Dreamcast came home, you were basically able to bring arcades home. Yeah. So that was a huge selling point. Nowadays, you can already do, and again, I'm just yep. free thinking here. You can already, a lot of, you know, the systems now, you can download ar- arcades, uh, basically, as is. Uh, I got the Capcom Home Arcade, which has 16 just perfectly, uh, you know, uh, emulated uh, arcade games and not only that but nowadays there aren't really a lot of new arcade games mm-hmm. to come out like in the 99 2000 there was still brand new arcade games coming out right where you can now go ah, i want that on the dreamcast but with that being said also i agree that the, yeah if they don't if they do that they don't focus on microsoft sony and nintendo but they focus, like you said, on television, on Atari, Polymega, Hyperkin, you know, any of those with these clone systems or these newer systems that are focusing on older games. And then that may be the, the switch to go with. Um, I like the idea. Obviously, we don't know what the rumor is going to be. We'll find out when we find out. But that'd be interesting. I'm not cre- – as much as I love the Dreamcast, I'm just not keen on the name. I know. I know it's kind of a placeholder at this point, but – Yeah, I don't, uh, think they would, I don't think they would call it the Dreamcast, too. I think – I think, I think, Dreamcast, dose. Yeah, I think with the rumor – I think with the rumor that it's going to be the next console from Sega and the last one they had was a Dreamcast, that people are just saying yeah. Dreamcast. I get thing. it. I get it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that'd be interesting to see Sega back in the home console, uh, in the home console market because yeah, they 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 did good. So we'll uh, we'll see. I'm just trying to trying to think what their niche could be to be different enough. Uh, I know I heard a rumor, not a rumor, but I heard that I know Sega is working on a new Sonic, but like they're going to take their time with this one. 
Well, they're not going to rush it out. And, and that could be the announcement, too. We don't know. True. Now, don't get me wrong. Sonic Mania rocks. Yep. I don't know how long that was in development, but that game is fantastic. Uh, but like to get like a Sonic Fox, because remember there was a Sonic the Hedgehog four. It was weird, yep. but there was a Sonic four. Um, but uh, yeah, so them focusing on Sonic and because of the movie and they announced yep. there's going to be a sequel to the movie. Yep, we got that announcement uh, last late last week too. So now more than ever, Sega can get back out there. Sonic can get back out there and kind of take o- try and take over the world again. So. Great ideas. We'll see what happens. I I would love to lean towards another console, but at the same time, I got now three waiting to come in between the Intellivision, the the Atari, and the Polymega. Uh, so I'm I have again run out of room, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I just have the uh, the Polymega coming in at the moment, <laughs> so I'm good. I'm good between that and the 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 uh, the new Mini that I got last week. Yes. And and before we move on to that one, uh, folks, if you're listening, if you're watching in the comments below on the Instagram page, on the Twitter page, on the Facebook page, let us hear your ideas, your thoughts, what these Sega rumors are. You know, let's, uh, what would you love to see come out by, from Sega? And uh, we'll see who's on the mark and who's way off. So, uh, but yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Like I said, we're going to keep this one short. But I think in the mini... Uh, home department, I think we found the new King of the Hill. Did we? I think so, personally. So uh, we finally got, uh, as we thought they were going to be coming out in January, but actually came out last week, the North American TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Yes, and wow, am I impressed. (laughs) No, 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 really. Wow, am I impressed. I was actually very, very impressed. And again, that's coming from Anthony. Yes, and, and we all know that uh, between between the two of us, we know the, we know who the bigger critic is here. Oh, okay, absolutely. <laughs> there's no, I mean, there's no contest. But I have to say, like, just from um, you know, and last week, if you were watching last Tuesday, um, I decided to do an unboxing of it on on our Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash Retro Gamers Podcast, um, and I did an unboxing, and then I tried out some of the games on it. Just from the unboxing alone, like um, I had never owned a TurboGrafx-16, so this, yeah, was exci- this was exciting in its own right just to be able to, to, to have. Did you know anyone with a TurboGrafx growing up? I think I knew one person who had Me it, too. but I never played it. Everyone I ask always literally yeah. says, I knew one person who had yeah. it. Apparently, well, you're, what, only why... one was allowed every certain of blocks, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Know. Like one per block and no more. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I had never had the opportunity to actually physically play it. Okay. Um, so, so this oh, was, so you never touched one, even? No. I didn't realize that. No, no, never played one. Oh, see, never I got, played. I played my buddies when I was at his house, but so, okay, all right, now I got you. Okay, yeah, so never played one. So obviously, got the opportunity, then uh, took this out, played the games, and I have to say, um, I don't know if it was the marketing back then for uh, Turbo Graphics or whatever. Like, I don't know where they misstepped. What, whatever oh, they, misstep they made marketing um, big time yeah marketing it's usually the marketing thing. or and lack it, thereof yeah exactly i mean it could have been they just didn't put enough money into it but i this was a system i would have loved as a kid like <laughs> the game the game the games on it are great they're fluid they're vibrant now granted obviously they've been remade for the, the mini but just the, just the just the fun factor in mm-hmm. these games are fantastic. Now, do I think that there's a little more, um, it, it's a little heavy on one genre than others in terms of uh, uh, um, side-scrolling shooters. There are mm-hmm. a lot of those on there, but they do vary enough to make them interesting. That was the system. Because yeah. even though Konami put it out, Hudson is the original owner. Uh, Hudson, Hudson, I don't want to say Hudson. No, I was going to, I stopped myself because I don't, I can't guarantee that Hudson Soft was the right. publisher who put out the Turbo Graphics, but they were heavy on the Turbo Graphics 16. Yep. Ton of their games, Adventure Island, uh, yes. the, the various shoot 'em up. And Adventure Island, I love. Yeah, um, Adventure Island is a blast. I mean, I I played a little bit of that. Like that was the whole thing. I just wanted to play random games. Mm-hmm. Um, Adventure Island was a blast. Bonk's Adventure. Oh wow, that game is so much fun. 
And you never played that before? No, no, this is all new. Because it did come out on the NES. Yeah, Bonk. and yeah, yeah, and that was, I never played Bonk on the NES. I don't remember <laughs> so, it coming out. Adventure Island, I played. On the yeah, that was there was a few of them on on but Game Boy, I, but Nintendo. still on the Turbo Graphics. You know, um, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts is fun. Um, uh, some of the I, I tried a few of the side uh, uh, the side scrolling shooters. Now they're not normally my favorite. I like them, but they're not. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't run to them. Yeah, but Blazing Lasers. Yeah, like I need to go back and play that. That game was like manic i couldn't keep <laughs> track of what was going on on this but it was just so much fun I, I have to oh go ahead as i say jumped over to the japanese side because they have the pc don't you love how that well. switches it, the switching is great <laughs> the background changes are great like they do everything so, yep. so well. and even though there are games on the the pc engine side that i'll never be able to play because they are in japanese yeah that's a little weird which is unfortunate but but still um it's just great to see that they have that option because at the end of the day, I think there are like 57 games on the whole. Something like that. Yeah, 50, yeah there's 57. a few. Um, but one of the, and if you ever, if you ever look up lists of like um, either underrated games or best games you've never played types of things, because I'm always looking for stuff that's like, what would be like an equivalent to a Zelda game? That's really yeah. awesome. Um, for the TurboGrafx-16, it always shows up on every list, Newtopia. Yes. Um, and Utopia is on the mini. So I cannot wait to get my hands on Utopia. <laughs> like, I don't want to start it now because I'm still working on a bunch of other games. I'm like, but <laughs> new to- like I've got my eye on that game. I'm really looking yeah. forward to playing that. I love when you start a game, the animation of putting the hue card in or, yes. or even just he- hearing the, the whirl, the, mm-hmm. the whir of the CD spin yep. up and then start to slow down when i first heard that and saw that i flipped out because i'd gotten the pc engine first the yes. mini uh thinking it was in be forever turbo graphic um but uh from me actually playing some of these games originally like bonk like um moto rotor like splatterhouse my buddy had splatterhouse mm. These, the, as fluid as they are today, that is not just because of emulation. They were fluid back then. Yep. They didn't look as crisp, but they were definitely yep. fluid. Um, as a fan of the shoot 'em up genre, I don't understand how I didn't own a Turbo Graphics, but I, to be fair, I kind of fell in love with that genre a little later in life. Yep. But this mini definitely owns to it. Um, the uh, I love. Did you did you go through the different? Um, um the different displays that you can play it on i didn't go through them but you i saw go th- the options there yeah one of them is a turbo express which is amazing because i mean it shrinks the screen down don't get me wrong, it's very oh, uncomfortable boy. to play but you get you, the turbo express was just the turbo graphic handheld you literally yeah, use the a, same game a tiny little thing um but the games work out perfectly uh, there's a version. I even re- I actually stumbled across it yesterday. Uh, Ninja Gaiden is on the Japanese side. Yep. Um, very odd version. Not odd, just because we're used to the NES version. Uh, but a, a very nice version of, of Ninja Gaiden. But yeah, those games on there are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the PC Engine, I'm now up to three controllers for the Turbo Graphics. And of course, if I get the, I can get the five-player multi-tap yeah. eventually. Um, oh wait, I got one, two, three, and actually, I originally ordered a an extra controller that's going to be shipping any day now. So I'm actually going to have four. So now you ask yourself, how not counting the one that's shipping, if I have a PC Engine and a Turbo Graphics Mini, how would I have three controllers when each one only came with one? You Do the math. One? Do the math. Uh, no. So had the PC engine. This is before the Turbo Graphics showed up. Okay. Been playing the PC engine, loved it. Uh, so my buddy Mario, he's been on the show a couple times, lives downstairs. So I'm like, yeah, all right, let me head downstairs. You know, we're gonna grab something to eat, uh, bring down the PC engine, we'll we'll play some games. So I bring the mini downstairs. Um, and he has a he has a retro pie. And we spoke about emulators or whatever, but he has a retro pie. And the, the retro pie plug is a, a USB mini, but the other end of it is a straight up two prong wall outlet. You know what I mean? Like it's not a USB on the other side. It's, it's an actual plug. So, um, so I unplugged that. I also had my, my PlayStation mini with me because I wanted to show them the classic as well. So I plugged that in. We're playing some of the PlayStation. Unplug it, 
plug the PC Engine Mini in with that, uh, with that uh, power outlet, boots up perfectly, but the controller doesn't work. So I'm like, that's weird. I thought he broke my controller. So, so I'm like, oh, man, you broke my controller. And um, so now we're futzing around with it. You know, the USB felt loose. I'm like, what the hell happened? Only went downstairs two floors. How, what broke? Turns out that if you use the wrong input power supply, you can bust that PC Engine Mini. Apparently, the plug that was you that I use was more power, had more juice in it, and I don't know why it did it. But when I looked it up online, and all the message boards said the exact same thing, I used the AC plug for a RetroPie, plugged into the PC Engine Mini, and it disabled the controller. Wow! But like nothing flashed on the screen. It just like, killed it. It just stopped it. It was the oddest thing. So now I'm like seething because I'm like, this is a terrible design flaw. And I'm like, all right, let me exchange the turbo graphics. Well, I bought it from Amazon Japan and it's not Amazon's fault that the machine didn't work. It was my fault. So I would have to pay for the shipping to send it back, which when I did the calculation came out to like $140 through DHL, because that's like you would send it through DHL. Right. That's how I got it. I'm like, that's not happening, because I'm not even going to risk. Dude, even if they sent me yeah. a refund, I'm still not going to risk it. Yeah. So I just went and bought another PC Engine Mini. <laughs> so it was a why, lot cheaper. Larry, why do these things always happen to you? I don't know. And here's the, here's the best part. The controller worked. It wasn't the controller that broke. You fried the actual console. In the PC Engine Mini. Mm. That bro- and I even tried, like, when I finally got the North American Turbo Graphic, I tried that controller. Mm-hmm. That didn't work. Just something is the weirdest thing wow. in the world. So I promptly threw the original PC Engine into the garbage. It is somewhere on a Long Island landfill as we speak. And I got my new one sitting in the box, but I got a wonderful controller with it. You should have hung on to it. Uh, I, I actually just, wanted to take it apart. Yeah, that's what I mean. I would have taken it apart or but I would I, have just like put it on a shelf for, for show. Show and tell. <laughs> no, because then I keep confusing it with the other PC Engine Mini. I'd be like, why doesn't this work again? Yeah. <laughs> I, the amount of stuff I've thrown out. Oh, I know. Retro I know. Freak. The Retro Freak, which there was no reason to throw that out. Yeah, it would have cost me money. <laughs> I got that. Over. Did I get that imported? I did get that imported. Yeah, from uh, from UK, yeah. I think. I think Play Asia or something. Yeah. No, no, no. Play Asia is where I got it from. I think you ordered it from the UK. Maybe I did order from the you UK. Because paid, you paid a lot more than I did. Uh, you usually the case. Yes. You picked it up in person. Yes, I did. So I don't want to hear about it. It costs you a flight. <laughs> no, I had to pay for it in the store. I didn't steal it. I meant like it. shipping. I meant like shipping. I know. but And I could have gotten you one, too. I couldn't want, want to wait that long. <laughs> well, look, you know what? One day you will learn your lesson. <laughs> but between now I got to... Between that, the, the $100 you flushed on the PlayStation Classic, the, the PC Engine hey, trash. No, that no, PlayStation Classic is worth every dollar. I'm just, I'm just saying. And now I have a $100 PC Engine controller. <laughs> That's how I well, see it. I have a high-end... Congratulations. Oh, can I also point out, since we're talking about the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, uh, I would like to say kudos to them for creating a, uh, like, at least a six-foot cable on the controller. Oh, Very yeah. Helpful. That's low, right? Yeah. Holy Lord. Very helpful. Very Because the Nintendo yeah. one, I had to buy an extender. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. to buy an extender. It was just, Even on the Super just, Nintendo. Yeah, I know. They were just uh, too damn short. Yeah, so, they were. It was terrible. So but Yeah, TurboGrafx-16, big plus. All right. Uh, really enjoying it. Well, and uh, can't wait to play some more. I'm, I had no, I honestly thought you at least played a little bit of the Turbo Graphic back in the day. So I'm happy to hear that you love it. And you, this is literally the first time you're playing a lot of these games. Yeah, with the, I think, I honestly think with the exception of Splatterhouse and uh, maybe Ghouls mm-hmm. and Ghosts, everything on there is new to me. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, with that, we're actually going to wrap this one up. We said it was a handheld episode, so we're going to keep this one short. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ant, where can they find us? Uh, you guys can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast. Uh, Twitter is at Retro Gamers Pod, mm-hmm. right? You can yep. email us at email at the retrogamers.com 
or you can go to our website, theretrogamers.com, for some basic info on, uh, on who we are and what we do. But since you're already listening and watching to us, you pretty much get the gist. Simple enough. All right. What did I miss? And that was, I, think, I think that was it. Uh, or, or, well, ha -ha. well, I mean, you're listening or watching, but you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube if you prefer watching. Um, we, I don't know why you want to watch us, but hey, it's up to you. Uh, <laughs> also, you know, if you want, please leave us those five star ratings uh, or good reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Uh, the ratings and the reviews always help us, and we're very grateful uh, for them. So, uh, yeah, I yes. Think that's all right, cool. So, uh, and enjoy those game cases. Good luck finding, uh, let us know where Ocarina of Time is. Yeah, I may do, maybe I'll do like a short documentary as I like scour through my uh, my closet because let me tell you something it's not it's no easy feat it really no, is i've been there i've seen yeah. it well yeah a I, lot and, of stuff in there yes i do and i have since reorganized it all so it's like even yeah. <laughs> What's it, what was that game on nes spelunker that's basically what i'm going to be doing oh Spel spelunker was awesome yeah I, <laughs> just don't be pitful harry <laughs> no no i definitely don't want to do, no there are no crocodiles i don't think in my, uh, <laughs> just just two cats again your way awesome. yeah just two cats that will like slice my face off <laughs> and with that folks we will catch you right here next week on the retro gamers podcast